So, we're finally back in a church again then. Yes, it's nice to be back after all this time. Does that mean that everyone else is going to be back soon and making the place look untidy again? Well, I know we say that a church is more than just a building, but it would be good to meet again in person and worship together. However, we won't be completely back to normal for a while. Good, because I don't want all those kids running around and making a noise again. As I was about to say, we are gradually opening the church for different uses, but there is a policy on our website that everyone needs to be aware of before coming into the building. Policy? Sounds boring to me. Is there a box that I can just tick to say that I agree to the terms and conditions without reading it? I know that it doesn't sound the most exciting of things to read, but it is important that we act correctly for the benefit of ourselves and others. And there are only five key points, one for each finger. Five? That's more points than Phil has in a sermon. Hang on a minute. We've only got four fingers. Why is that? Uh, well, let's just gloss over that for now and, and move on. So, what are these five points then? Well, the first is regarding your health. If you feel unwell for any reason or should be self-isolating, please don't enter the building. That sounds easy enough. I probably don't want a beer if I'm not feeling well anyway. So, that was point number one. The second point is regarding hand washing and keeping your distance from other people. Individuals must maintain a two metre social distance unless you're with someone from the same household, bubble or box in the attic. Hang on, that's two points. Maybe, but they're grouped together in this policy and we don't want to upset the team who spent ages and ages writing it. OK, keeping my distance from other people is easy enough. But hand washing? Why do I need to do that? I had a shower last week. Even if you washed before you left your own home, it's important to wash your hands when you enter the building or otherwise use the hand sanitizer. You'll find hand sanitizer stations as you go around the church. There's also some guidance provided for wiping down surfaces. So, that's the first two points. What's next? Well, the third point is that you should wear a face covering, even when observing a two metre social distance. This is mandatory in places of worship and for any activity that is accessed by multiple users or when you come into contact with people you wouldn't normally meet. Hey, do you want to see my different face coverings? Okay. Hang on, I'll be back in a minute. How about this one then? A nice bin. Or this one, a nice cardboard box. What about this one then? A nice paper bag. Uh, Sly, I think uh, a normal surgical mask or something similar is much more practical. And what's the fourth key point then? Any access to the church building requires coordination and notification in advance. What do you mean? It's so that contact details, the number of individuals in the building, room assignments, timing between activities and cleaning needs can be managed appropriately. But can't we just go straight in if we already have a key? Even if we have a key, we need to ask permission before we enter the building. Well, that sounds like a lot of work to me. Well it is we're obliged by law to gather this data. So, who do I have to contact before I come into the church then? Our church administrator, Adina, is the first point of contact and you can find further details in the policy. And anything else on that point? By the time you come into the church, you might find QR codes that you have to scan with your smartphone. A QR codes those strange pictures made up of black and white squares? That's right. We need to be able to show who has been in the church because if there are outbreaks of COVID-19, then the government want to be able to trace who the individuals have been in contact with. So look out for details in the policy, the bulletin, or on notices in the building. And that just leaves one key point then. That's right. The fifth point follows on from what I just said, and that is to observe all the notices displayed in the building. What? All of them? Like when the Kidlington Karaoke Club meet in the building? Or a reminder not to switch off the freezer. I'm not referring to every notice in the church, but you should be aware of the notices regarding COVID-19 measures. Take the time to read and understand them and not just ignore them.
Well, that sounds easy enough. So, there are five key points. One for each of my fingers, and an extra one as a bonus. But, can you remember them all? Of course I can. One, stay away if you're not well. Two, although really, it's two points, not one. But anyway, two, wash your hands and don't get close to one another. Three, wear a face covering. Four, give your contact details before coming into the building. And five, read the notices regarding COVID-19 measures. Well done, Sly. See, that's simple enough. And as I said earlier, there are more details in the policy, which you can get by using the policies and documents link at the top of the KBC website, and is also on the screen below now. And please be aware that it will change as new government guidelines come in. Do you have any last comments or questions? Well, as the government keeps coming up with catchy phrases and slogans, I've come up with one of my own. Really? I'm not sure if I want to hear this. Go so, on. It's dead good. What is it? <clears throat> right. Don't be a muppet. Listen to that puppet. Oh, Sly.